All right, well, hey everybody, Rob Satram here from Feedback Wrench, and we are trying to help entrepreneurs take action in their life and head upward and forward, trying to add value in the economy, and I just wanna help businesses move in the right direction. Now, today what we're gonna talk about is a very specific thing. We're gonna talk about WordPress with one of the best WordPress themes and page builders available, and that's Beaver Builder. This is meant to be a basic tutorial on how to get started on editing your website once somebody has set it up for you in Beaver Builder. We tend to use Divi, which is D-I-V-I, or Beaver Builder, or some of the more traditional um, Gutenberg editors when it comes to WordPress. There's quite a few different options. I don't mean to overwhelm you there, but let's just say, for example, you're a client of mine <clears throat> and somebody has added you as an editor um, or has put you as an admin. I'm gonna show you how you get started in WordPress here. So what I'm gonna show you is, uh, now Beaver Builder, just get this out of the way. If you're doing WordPress, contact us. We have shared hosting or um, primary hosting that's a very good value. We like to help people get started. If you're a small business and you want a website, we can help you set up uh, a site at any production level. But um, WordPress is a great place to build a website. It can be a little overwhelming, but Beaver Builder is pretty much the fastest, easiest to use page builder that has the most sound code underneath it. And I highly recommend it. I've used absolutely every one in the hundreds of sites that we've done. And Beaver Builder is where it's at. Check out the link in the description if you decide to buy it. Otherwise, we do a package where we provide hosting, Beaver Builder, Beaver Themer, um, just to have a website. So if you're a small business and maybe you can't do a ton, reach out to us. But um, we definitely do help people out. So here's how you get started in WordPress. Now, this is a dummy site. It's Fixer Upper Minnesota. And what you're going to do to get started in a website is you type in the domain name and then you got to get to the WordPress login. And the way you do this most often, unless it's been changed, which we do that often, is you're going to type in the domain name and then you type forward slash and then it's wp-admin. That's wp-admin after you put a slash to it. Now once you get there, you're going to come to a login screen. Now in this login screen... Um, you'll see there are, usually it will say WordPress right here. This is one specifically for one and one. Uh, but if you've been added, you'll have a username and a password and you'll basically go in and you'll log in. Now, once you're logged in, this is WordPress. This is a more basic install of WordPress. We don't have a whole lot in there. And this is the dashboard. I'm not going to go over absolutely everything here. I want to show you speed to action, but here's the most basic principles when it comes to WordPress. Now this site I've built out a little bit, but basically you have posts and you can create these blog posts, which are just like this. There's one that's always in there. It says, hello world. Um, and then it would have the post. And then, so this is text with a header right here. You have a sidebar over here that you can edit and do all sorts of things. People can log into WordPress and leave comments if you wanted to. So you have these different blog posts or just post types. Then you have pages. Pages are very much like it. Um, they both essentially do the same thing, but there's a little bit of difference. Pages are more of a standalone page. <clears throat> then you have, so these are two types of pages that can just be created on your website. There are additional post types that you can create, but for the sake of keeping things easy here, I'm just going to keep cruising. So basically, as you create blog posts, you would go to posts, add new post. You can look at the post by going to all posts. You can hit plus and go post here. This would help you add a new post. Um, when you're in posts, you can get logged in and hit add new there. You can hit add new here. And whenever you have a post, you have categories and tags, and that's just an organizational structure that you can do some cool things. Beyond that, you have media. So this is where all your photos are going to be. Now, when it comes to photos in a website, you want to make sure that you're not uploading gigantic, large images. So we have a set of images here that we have. Um, they're local. So this is Minneapolis, St. Paul. And if you look at this, they're pretty big pictures. They're 2578 by 1080. 270 kilobytes. What we've done is I've compressed these down so that they're not very big. Any web page that you have, you don't want to have any 
images that are bigger than about you know 300 kilobytes you you want to keep the amount of total images on one page that you end up using very low because it it makes it go slow so you have images here you can add a new image right here you can drag and drop into it if you want to um, you can select files and that would look at your computer but be very careful when you're uploading from a phone of a picture that you took because usually that's going to be two or three picture uh, two or three megabytes at least um, and whenever you're doing stuff i usually will use adobe illustrator so here's an example i put this giant photo in here and then what i do is i adjust the board it's called the art board so that it's right there I click off and then I go file export for web <clears throat> and then what I'll do is I'll say okay I want it to be a certain size 1920 by 1280 and then I choose JPEG medium and then you can reduce the quality here but this gets it down to about 208 kilobytes which is pretty decent then I'd hit save and upload it so you can use Adobe products if you want Photoshop would do that you just want to make sure that they're not huge let's move on here so on this site I've gone in and I've actually created some basic uh, stuff now this site is <laughs> we're working and we're just converting a, a gentleman so that his AdWords is gonna work better we are converting a non-responsive site so if you look when this gets small it doesn't respond it doesn't change sizes and Google really doesn't like that anymore nor does Bing and we didn't want to invest anything for rebranding or anything like that it's a very basic site that he had if you notice it's .html so what we're doing here is we're making a little bit nicer one using a lot of the same stuff but it's going to be mobile responsive okay so when I pull it small this is what it would look like on a phone there's going to be an appointment button but everything changes depending on the size of the screen so if it's on an iPad it might look something like this so we're updating it here <clears throat> now this is a page that I have up on the top you have your menu this is a logo. This is a, a little call to action that I put in there. And then I, we've even put phone numbers that have hyperlinks to the, to the actual call button. So you hit it, it's going to call them. But we've got three basic pages in here. I haven't even changed the review, but we put in his Google reviews by using the Rich Plugins, Snip, uh, Rich Plugins Google Professional Plugins plugin. And then we have the contact page. This is just meant to be very simple, okay? Um, whenever you're on a site though, here's what you need to know. You've got, when you're looking at a page, you can hit edit page. And what this is going to do is look at the back end of each page, every blog post and every page. And even there's these other types called portfolios are going to have a back end. Now this is the 5.0 version of WordPress. So when you first get in here, you got a page title and page titles are important. If you go to Google and you type in, a website and you just want to see what's relevant you type in site colon and then HT and then the actual we'll do my site the actual domain name that didn't work site colon oh dot com <laughs> and what this will do is this actually pulls up everything that's been crawled in my site so here's what I want you to see though when you're in Google you have this, this heading that you can click, that is the meta title, which is also tied to your page title. Then you have what's called the meta description, which is right here. And then once you're actually on the page, you have a number of other things. There's actually a page description in here. Because if you remember, if you hit two buttons and go down to, a, or right click and go down to view page source, you'll want to remember that every single website that you're doing, holy cow, not sure what's happening to my internet here. This is this is what a website is. And you have some initial properties that the whole site has, right? Um, different JavaScript. But then when you come down here, it's basically a bunch of text with images and different information in there. Now, because of that, you want to have clean code, which is why we like Beaver Builder. But... Um, one thing that you'll see in here is there's actually the meta, if you type in meta description, go up to the top, or description, meta title, there's, wow, well, whatever. 
when you're up on the top here, you can start seeing. So here's the OG title, Feedback Ranch St. Paul Digital Marketing SEO. You'll see that this stuff is actually written on the page. And besides that, there's some little tools that will show you more write up. Basically, there's markup on a page that makes it what it is. And so Moz, MOZ.com has some interesting tools. Here's some markup options that we've got um, to show you. We've got open graph, general attributes, um, on page elements. So feedback ranch. Here's my page title, meta description, some keywords that I have on there, the H1s and H2s. There's some cleanup that we could do on this site, but um, the bottom line is, is there's this markup, right? So when you're looking at a page, you've got your page title, then there's a series of other things in here. Um, this is a page. In the new, when you go up here to this gear icon, you'll be able to see some different attributes here. Now there's two types of editors. You have Beaver Builder Editor and then the Standard Editor. In this particular page, it's not showing anything right here because I've been using the Beaver Builder Editor. But if you're on another page, here's what a standard page would have looked like. If I go New Page, I could use the Standard Editor. Everything's being a little slow right now, which is kind of goofy. And as I type, it will go there. I hit enter, I can hit plus, and I could put an image, and then I could choose something in my media library from the image. And what you'll see is it just starts to create something here. This is the standard Gutenberg, this is the new standard editor. But when you do that, um, whenever you're in WordPress here, when you hit save draft, that just saves a draft, but it doesn't push it out into the server and make it live. You can preview it by hitting this button and in another tab, it will show you what it's going to look like. So here's what this page would look like. And then once you're ready to get going, you hit publish. So that's the traditional editor. This is good for blog posts, but there are some advantages to Beaver Builder. <clears throat> in particular, rather than having a sidebar, which sometimes there's a sidebar there, that I, but I've taken it off, you get more flexibility with Beaver Builder. So what happens is, if you come here to the gear icon, or the little dot, 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 and you say convert to Beaver Builder, launch Beaver Builder, this will actually go, and it's it's what's called a visual builder. And here's how, <laughs> here we go. Everything's getting a little slow, and I'm not really sure why here. But here's the beaver builder. You're actually going to look at, holy moly. What, am I downloading something or what? Um, what you'll see here is you've got rows, so this, there's a big section here, and then you have a column underneath that. But here's how it basically works. Up here, you've got a whole bunch of settings you don't need to touch, but you can save your template as you make it. You can duplicate stuff. But up here, um, done is basically where you will save stuff. And then when you hit plus, here's Beaver Builder. Okay. So up front, you've got modules, which are like you would put text and drag a text module over here. And when you drag that text module over, you're going to be able to update the text and enter whatever you want, long or short. And if I hit cancel, that would go away. If I hit save, that would save. If I hit save as, that would actually, I'd be able to name this and it would be something I, I could come back to. But you've got plus modules. Now there's standard Beaver Builder modules, there's saved modules, and then there's specific WordPress ones. But... The main ones are you've got photos, you've got text, you can do video. When you put video in there, you will you can either call upon, when you put video, let's just actually show you this. Right now the video is saying we want to use media library, which would be a video on my computer. Don't ever store video on your computer. Don't ever do that. What we want to do is embed. And what you could do here is you could grab a YouTube URL and just paste it right there and hit save. And then you can come in and actually add structured data, which is good, and put the title and stuff in there. But um, that's how you do a video. But here's an interesting thing. So 
Let's hit plus. Usually the first thing you do is you say, I'm going to do a, I'm going to create a row. So you have a one row, two row, three row column. Um, or it could be something like a right sidebar. And when you drag it out here, you'll see there's kind of this stacking thing, right? So I'm going to put this here, not inside of these other existing ones, but way up top. And what this will do is give me the ability to put some modules um, if I want to. When you're in here, you'll see that this doesn't go all the way to the edge. When you hit the little gear buttons, you can change the properties of all this. So you have this style. And right now, this is a fixed versus full width row. So I'm going to turn it to full width. That would pull it out to the edges, and then it would be full width. Um, and then you could drag in modules if you wanted to. You could put a text thing, a photo over here, whatever you want, right? So those are modules. But here's the beauty of Beaver Builder. Here's the bottom line. You've got templates, which are page templates, and you have rows, and then you come down to these pre-built rows. Under pre-built rows, you have heroes, which are kind of like your opening types of images. And these are made for you. This is slicker and snot. This is such a a great way to speed up your word flow. Basically, you grab this template. Wow. <laughs> Force quit that. I don't know what's going on here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Anyways, you have templates. And these templates are very helpful and very useful to use. And as you pull templates in there, you can edit them, get after it. And then once you're done, you hit done and update it, and that's how you get started. So you're going to log in, and once you're there, it'll be good.